Have you ever wondered how countries protect themselves from aerial attacks? Imagine a world where invisible missiles streak through the skies, locking onto their targets with pinpoint accuracy. The Soviet Union during the Cold War was a master of this technology, and today we're diving into one of the most powerful surface-to-air missile systems ever created. It's known as the SA-11 Gadfly, a weapon that still shapes modern warfare. In this video, we'll explore how this system was designed, how it evolved, and why it's still relevant today. Trust us, this is a fascinating story you won't want to miss. Stick around, and you'll learn why the SA-11 is one of the most important air defense systems in history. During the height of the Cold War, the Soviet Union was engaged in a technological race with the United States. The battlefield was not only on the ground, but also in the skies. The Soviet military needed a way to defend against the growing threat of low-flying aircraft, helicopters, and even cruise missiles. This is where the SA-6 Gainful Missile System came in, a formidable weapon designed to protect Soviet forces. It was mobile, powerful, and capable of striking down enemy aircraft. But the Soviets weren't content with just being good, they wanted to be the best. They sought a new system that would push their air defense capabilities to the next level. And so, in 1972, they began designing what would become the SA-11 Gadfly. The SA-6 had one weakness that became apparent as new threats emerged. It relied on a single-fire control radar for multiple launchers. This meant that if the radar was disabled or jammed, the whole defense system could fail. So the Soviet engineers set out to create a system that would solve this problem, ensuring that each launcher had its own radar, making the system much more resilient and effective in combat. Enter the 9K-37 Buk missile system, the foundation of the SA-11. The design was both clever and efficient, featuring a track chassis that could carry multiple missiles and a fire control radar that was built right into the launcher. This made the Buk highly mobile, able to travel over rough terrain and quickly reposition to meet the changing battlefield. The missiles themselves were a thing of beauty, with their sleek design and advanced guidance systems. Each missile was powered by a solid propellant rocket motor, capable of flying up to 20 miles and reaching altitudes of 46,000 feet. The 9M38 missile, which was the core of the Buk system, was equipped with a radar homing guidance system, allowing it to lock onto its target with incredible accuracy. The Buk was designed to engage a wide range of threats, from low-flying aircraft to cruise missiles, and could even take on high-speed targets. Its radar system would track incoming threats, while the missile itself would home in on the target and destroy it with a proximity fuse that detonated the missile's warhead near the target, ensuring maximum damage. In 1977, the Soviet Union began testing the new Buk system, and by 1980, it was officially adopted into service. This new weapon system was designated the 9K37-1 Buk-1, but NATO quickly assigned it the codename SA-11 Gadfly upon recognizing its capabilities. The system was a game-changer, offering unparalleled flexibility and firepower in the sky. The Buk-1 could take on a variety of aerial threats, and because of its mobility, it could be deployed rapidly in different locations to counter any air assault. But the Soviet Union didn't stop there. They knew that the future of warfare wasn't just about the here and now, but about evolving to meet new challenges. So, in the early 1980s, they began working on an improved version of the Buk system. By 1983, the 9K-37 family was modernized, introducing the 9M-38 successor, the 9M-317 missile. This missile was faster, more accurate, and better at avoiding enemy jamming systems. It could engage even more sophisticated targets, including ballistic missiles. NATO, always on the lookout for new threats, quickly assigned the new system the designation SA-17 Grizzly. This upgrade made the SA-17 even more capable, and it wasn't long before a new generation of missiles was introduced. The 9M317 missile was adopted by the Soviet Union in 1998 and brought with it an array of new features, including advanced radar and tracking capabilities. These changes allowed the SA-17 to remain one step ahead of the latest Western technology, keeping its edge on the battlefield. As the years went on, the Buk system continued to evolve. New missile variants, such as those introduced in 2007, made the system even more capable. A vertical launch unit was developed, providing even greater flexibility and allowing for easier integration into modern military systems. But despite all these improvements, one thing remained constant. The core design of the Buk system was still rooted in the same principles that had made it so successful in the 1980s. Mobility, flexibility, and power. But just how effective was the SA-11 in real-world combat? 
Let's take a look at a recent conflict to see how it performed. During the 2008 South Ossetia War, the SA-11 Gadfly was put to the test. Both Russian and Georgian forces used the Buk system in the conflict, with the Russians using it to shoot down Georgian drones and aircraft. Georgian forces, in turn, also deployed Buk systems, successfully downing Russian planes. The results were clear, despite its age, the Buk system was still an incredibly effective weapon against modern aircraft and drones. The SA-11 success in the South Ossetia War was a testament to its enduring relevance. Even though the system had been developed in the 1970s, the constant upgrades and improvements ensured that it could still keep up with modern threats. It was a perfect example of how military technology doesn't just die when it gets old. With the right upgrades and maintenance, even older systems can remain incredibly effective on the battlefield. Over the years, the Buk system has spread far beyond Russia. Countries like Belarus, China, Egypt and Syria have all adopted versions of the Buk missile system, and some have even produced their own localized copies. China, for example, has modernized its version of the Buk to meet its own military needs, ensuring that the system remains a key component of their air defense strategy. The legacy of the SA-11 is one of constant evolution. From its early days as the Buk-1 in the 1980s to the more advanced SA-17, Grizzly, and beyond, the system has adapted to meet the changing needs of the battlefield. And with more and more countries adopting the system, it's clear that the Buk remains one of the most important air defense systems in the world. The versatility of the Buk system is one of the reasons why it has endured for so long. Whether it's being used to defend against low-flying aircraft, cruise missiles, or even ballistic missiles, the Buk system has proven itself time and time again. Its mobile design, powerful radar, and highly accurate missiles make it a force to be reckoned with, even in the most challenging combat environments. Another reason for its success is its adaptability. Over the years, the Buk system has been modified to meet the needs of different military forces around the world. Whether it's the improved 9M317 missile or the more recent versions developed in the 2000s, the Buk has always kept pace with technological advances, ensuring that it remains a vital part of modern air defense strategies. So what's the takeaway from all this? The SA-11 Gadfly is a true testament to the power of innovation and adaptation in military technology. Even decades after its initial introduction, it remains one of the most capable air defense systems in the world, proving that with the right upgrades, old technologies can stay relevant in a rapidly changing world. If you enjoyed learning about the SA-11 and its incredible journey, make sure to give us a like, leave a comment sharing your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There's so much more to explore, and we can't wait to share the next exciting story with you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.